pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, so first thing on our agenda will be with KSH, which is at Union Street 211-1-29.22. So we'll give a little brief history of where we're at. Um, we were here in um, October. We had submitted uh, a large part three EAF and some conceptual site plans uh, that had some preliminary engineering on them. Uh, we were here last month and we were just looking, there was a lot of discussion about fire access roads. Um, so we made a resubmission just sorted to address those. Uh, I think what we were mainly looking for was comments on the part three EAF. Uh, we did get a lot of comments on the preliminary set of plans, which we know have lots of engineering to be done on still, but they were kind of just as a start to get us through uh, the EAF and get us most of the studies through the EAF. So I know we just received traffic comments uh, right after the meeting last month, so uh, the traffic consultant is still working on those, we haven't gotten those back yet. Um, in here there's some minor comments about the SWIP and there's one comment about specifications in the EAF. Um, there are a lot of technical comments and detailed engineering comments that obviously yes, we still need to do a lot of that and work all that out. So I don't really think a lot of that we need to get into tonight. We just wanted to know if there's any more uh, comments forthcoming about the EAF. Are there any other comments in general about the plan before we get into the, the real deep engineering? Right. Um, so the, so the, the traffic study that was done by Mazer, you are in receipt of that. Yeah, their comment letter that they uh, prepared, that was, yes. on the 16th. So yeah. you're, you've taken these findings and went back We've to taken them. that back to our traffic consultant and they'll, uh, they'll be addressing or providing a response to that. So okay. that's the one thing we don't have that's still getting worked on by then. Um, okay, so part three of the AF included, I didn't bring the AF with me. I didn't either. I don't want to carry that one. I didn't either. Um, <laughs> but part three is, oh, yeah, is in reference there. to what? <laughs> what is that in reference to? So that was all that's regarding all secret, that. the whole <laughs> secret right? section. Yeah, section. Yeah. Yeah. Traffic, yeah. stormwater, archaeological, um, a bunch of others that were in there. There were a few oh, minor. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't see any. I think uh, the narrative, we didn't have any comments on going through. Uh, like you said, the SWIP had a couple of comments couple that might yeah. change from your... Uh, Correct, yeah. We still know, we know we need to do some soil testing for the pond. We did some, we made some very uh, broad assumptions or very basic assumptions on the infiltration rates. We use very basic ones. We find out they're better. It might help us out, but we uh, took some worst case scenario assumptions in the SWIP just to get through the report the first time to get some secret uh, issues out of the way. So what changes have you made to the plan? You said you did a recent middle, so I was maybe to brief the board on what was changed. So most the of the changes were done in, in regards to uh, fire access roads. Okay. So a bunch of turnarounds were shown. Um, I did have a conversation with uh, where is the fire, actually, have a fire access road plan. So all of them, we did show where turnarounds were required. Um, we did have a discussion about this one, as you noted in your uh, comment letter. Um, Ross had a different interpretation of the code, which is why he showed it this way. We discussed it, and we believe that you are correct. Um, he was thinking, because we're providing 26 foot, you didn't have to provide a turnaround until you got over 500 feet, and I told him I don't agree with that. It's, you either need to provide 20 feet fly once you get over 150 feet and a turnaround. So we will work on providing a turnaround for that, but the rest of them, some minor radius is on them, but other than that, We've shown that we do have fire access roads all the way around the building. A couple of minor uh, radii changes is not going to change anything. And now, did you reduce the number of uh, truck bays as well? I think you had up to 40 some truck bays in there, and now I think I counted 20. I don't know if we reduced the number of truck bays. We probably just reduced the number, showing the number of trucks that were on here. 
Um, the bays themselves can still be up to 40, because that you could fit that many trucks back there. But again, it's going to depend, depend on the final user. Right, and then we have to get our last. But one. I think our traffic analysis is using the full 40. Right. So we're okay. analyzing the worst case scenario. And has it been determined like which company is going to go, which use is going to be in which building yet? Not, not that I am aware of at this time. Because it's going to require us to be, you know, very strict about mm -hmm. the use of those buildings. Correct. Um, and they'll have to come back to us. Yeah, once we have the final user, we'll come back and we'll say, all right, this is what we've studied, this is what right. we analyzed, here's the actual user, here's what they're going to require, is it greater, we have to do more studies, more design, or is it less than, we're less than the impacts that we've uh, mitigated the first time. Okay. So you're in agreement with the uh, major, I mean, you sent them the report. Major we sent them the report, they're going to they're gonna review it. I'm not the traffic and, uh, engineer, I... I yeah, because they did make some good points. I mean, they did say, uh, due to the proximity of the Montgomery Elementary School, I believe it may also be appropriate to provide a discussion evaluation of traffic generation from the site during the school dismissal hours, which is, if anyone who's in the village knows that that's an accurate statement. Um, and there was also uh, some reference here, too, the inclusion of traffic for these developments appeared to be appropriate. Some discussion of any potential effect traffic from the proposed sailfish project in the town of Montgomery should be provided. So would that be addressed by our board in that or mm -hmm. the traffic mm -hmm. for, to provide those numbers? Yeah, we can we can get sailfish's traffic report and we'll be able to get their numbers. Okay. That's all public government at the town, so we'll be able to get those information that information from them. Okay. And the rest was a lot of you know technical details mm -hmm. that were uh, that were I just highlighted a few of them uh, that were have read through this. Yeah, the, the traffic consultant will provide a bullet by bullet response to all of those and update the traffic report accordingly. Now, did Mike and Tully provide a comment on this? They did. Mm -hmm. uh, sure did. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Would you like to go over these with us? or? I, I mean, if it's a matter of this being a preliminary plan and uh, most of the yeah. comments that were made are going to be addressed. Like I said, our. These were on our design plans, or our preliminary plans, which didn't have a lot of detail in them. So this is just comments on the additional detail, which we knew we were going to have to, to do. So we just had preliminary plans. So we know we have further engineering to do. We just wanted to make sure we get all the little intricacies out of the way before we delve into the, the, the real deep engineering and, and basically resolve all of these comments as we do that. So I don't have any specific questions on any as I read through them. Um, if I do, I'll reach out to Mike and tell the director. Is there 20, there's 20 yeah, more of them. Like I said, there's a lot. There's a, there's yeah. a, there's a very preliminary in nature, and this, this gets into a lot of final final details, which we know we don't have yet, but we're going to get there. As we're, not, we're not at that point yet. I think one of the comments uh, with the fire access plan that you have up, um, it wasn't clear what the actual building height of um, the office is, office area. So with the, off, with the height of the building, the fire access code height is measured, is defined differently than the village height, building height. Um, we'll clarify on the plans that the fire access will be less than 30 feet to the eave, which is required by the fire code, but to the peak, they could be 35 according to uh, village building code. So we'll clarify that on the plan, because right now the ball table just says 35 feet. Um, it's from average grade around the building is measured to the, the, uh, the highest point for a village and for the fire code is from the average grade to, to the eve. So we'll clarify that on the plans to show that we're definitely going to be below 30 on the eaves and below 35 on the peak. Or if it's a flat roof, we'll definitely be below either one. And we would be at 30, we would be at 35 feet for the, the uh, warehouses? I believe so, yes. Those will all be at 35 feet, yeah. Actually, most of them nowadays are looking closer to 40 because they're all looking for 36 foot clear on the inside for their racking systems. But rather than trying to go through the bearing system, they'll leave it at 35 and make sure that uh, they get a user that can accept that height. Okay. Anybody have any questions? So that's not, this building isn't in the flight pattern of the airport? Uh, this is not in the airport overlay to my knowledge. I believe it's 
Uh, so we, we, we know that the overlay is wrong. Right. right. Yeah. And so, and the last thing we heard from David Trick was that they had updated it. Updated, but we haven't done <laughs> anything yet. Okay. And as soon as we get, yeah. So you better get I'm just it before you. But so, certainly, I think we've already told Ross that he has to contact the FAA right. mm -hmm. and make sure that there is no. Yeah, I believe we're below any of the elevations that are right. would be in that. I think it's far enough away. But even if yeah. we are um, closer, obviously the. One of the mitigations is obviously the red light, but That's once you get that up, we'll update it and okay. we'll make any necessary changes that we need to. Also, they did a last meeting. We recommended that we wait to vote it on seeker to submit to the DOT for the entrance for the office building. That was a recommendation, according to the minutes, that we would wait till seeker was finalized and then we would send it to the DOT. Well, we already distributed. Our, our intent to move the agency. Right, but I mean the actual plan submitted to the DOT for DOT approval under Route 211. <coughs> well, we're going to need permits to do both the entrances. Right, but uh, during the planning phase, we just sent it to DOT. Right. For them to. I'm assuming the DOT will comment about access. Right. Once we finalize on. Well, what, yeah, I think what you. What, what, yeah, yeah, what, I think we need some further design before we send it to DOT yeah, anyway, yes. Right. I agree with that. We're not at that stage. We're not ready for that point yet. We're on the same path here. Yes, we're all yeah. on the same page. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Um, does anybody else have any questions you guys, specifically towards uh, the expanded EAF we did, uh, what they did for us? <coughs> I don't want to know. Other than the changes in the video. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the traffic study. The traffic and a couple of the swift changes are really the only two that I see that are right. still out there. Mm -hmm. we did, we, a few technical. We had a comment uh, about uh, uh, the specification. Yeah, yeah specification. Yeah. We'll go through. But other than that, I don't see anything in the comments that would change that. So we can finalize those two. Once we get back to traffic, we'll finalize swift and we'll get that back in along with uh, more detailed plans so we can proceed from there. I'm fine with this so far. You know, so far, I mean, yeah. still. Yeah, we're, we're still a long way. Still looking at screening and buffering yep. and uh, things that concern. We're still very things. preliminary in nature on the details on these. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're well okay. aware of that and okay. well in agreement with that. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. I asked for us. Uh, you know, you referred to property as a former link <coughs> property, and mm -hmm. so on the last time I looked, only Mr. Link and Mrs. Link's living trust was on the deed. And as in, in the minutes, he said he will obtain a copy for the records. So I okay. Wondering. I don't, I didn't, but I will. If in fact transferred. I'm okay. Well, I can get you a definitely. If there is a, um, if there was a deed transfer out there, I can get you a, a copy of it. Next one is uh, 181 Boyd Street, which is on 207-1-46.2. Um, we met about that last meeting as well. So I'm trying to remember what the changes were. There's, I know we submitted um, the big things were uh, defining all the eave heights, which are now on the plan. Uh, there was a question about the eave height of the proposed building. We'll clarify that it is from the average grade around. We'll make sure that, uh, again, we have that. The other big one was architecture. Um, I actually got an email at about 3 o'clock this afternoon that uh, the applicant has uh, uh, engaged Jason Anderson to do some architectural renderings. So they will be working on those, and those will be, uh, those will be definitely with the work from. Um, I believe that was it with the, the major change. That was a lot of the discussion last month. Yeah, if I recall, we had some discussions about the placement of the building too, and not to um, impede any 
visibility to the railroad tracks. Correct. Um, the other thing was um, you asked to us to reach out to the railroad track. We did reach out. Uh, they said they had no comment other than they want to know if we were looking for uh, some sort of siding for this project. And we said no, not at this point in time. There's no, there's no need for this building to have a siding off the railroad. So the railroad had no comment. Um, Ross said he was going to reach out to again to get him to supply that in writing. Uh, they did have a phone conversation with him. Yeah, we would appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I, I have a question about um, where the snow removal yep. is going to be. Correct. There's already a problem with um, water runoff on Boyd, um, where even on a dry day it pools. So now the water, the snow is right down here. Pools. Yeah, right. The snow is right up against Boy Street. Mm -hmm. So I have a concern about that. That I mean, that it floods there anyway because it, of course. It, Isn't there a stream right there? Well, there there's is. A there's there's yeah. dam in no. there too, and there's a stream that ran through to where there's the water behind the post office, and where mm -hmm. the water is all. In the <coughs> so, so I I have a concern about that. That that snow removal is just going to um, increase those. The water in that area. Uh, is that was that site just picked arbitrarily for the? Uh, it's kind, it's kind of picked not arbitrarily, but uh, that's really the only area of pavement that's not going to be left that we can uh, push the snow off of the pavement. We did provide two areas, one on either side of the driveway, um, but yeah, we can look at that and see if there's going to be uh, drainage issues down there if that's going to cause it. We'll look into that. Because even, I mean, God forbid there'd be a really major storm, then that hole between the snow and the building, it impedes any vision um, of people coming in and out of the post office. Um, there's a bus stop where there's a number of kids. There's a few bus stops. Um, the railroad tracks. It's... Oh, well, what, even, the, even the runoff from the parking lot that's going to be paved, is that being calculated? The, uh, we have not yet because we haven't finalized our grading to figure out uh, where our total disturbance was. Um, so that'll be part of the next. Uh, again, this is still preliminary in nature. We haven't done uh, design engineering on this as well. So we're still at kind of a, a sketch on this moving through. I mean, because this is a hill. So I mean, where the building is going to be, it's going to be higher at a higher elevation. And there's so be everything more. that well, used to kind of sit in there, because back in here, it, it it can get wet just even off the railroad tracks if you ever been down the railroad tracks. Um, that whole area is wet back there. So now it's above, behind and all that water is just going to just keep flowing down. You're talking about the area behind the existing building. Mm -hmm. okay. well, the area behind the existing building and where this building the is. Building. If you go back this way, this is all water back here. So this yeah. this building, now there's, and building. now in the parking lot, there's no place for water runoff to go except into Boyd Street. Okay. The elevations are in the back of the building are mm -hmm. higher. Than We're all higher. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, it's like it falls in the valley there. <coughs> we would like to see. Um, thank you. Okay. Scott, how many stumps did you show me? Four. One for each. There's there's three uses in the existing buildings, right. and one for the uh, and then one more for the proposed one. So we did have four. We got one for each of the theoretical tenants. That's okay. okay. So. One of the issues that I know that Buddy tried to address was the fact that um, that's why you see that page. And if, if they want village garbage pickup, the village garbage truck will not go on private property. Okay. So uh, if, if these four are well into the property line, right. um, and unless they're going <laughs> to they're going to physically move the dumpsters or whatever they're doing, the cans. To the street, like everybody, every other, like every other resident that and business does that wants garbage pickup, they're gonna have to go to a commercial pickup, I think. Okay. All right. Uh, or, or I should have to put them someplace else where they can, where they can easily get access. I'd rather not have some sort of dumpster enclosure out by the road. Right. right. I, I understand, understand that, but, yeah, but that became an issue because okay. they were actually going on and into the lot to pick up the garbage, which they're not supposed to do, and that's why you see that. All right, you know, that cage, whatever you want to call it, right? Like sort of at the entrance, um, so they can, the garbage guys can get off the truck, actually lift up, I guess, the thing, pull out the bags. And well, yeah, I think you, you look at two, 
with, with the increased size of the project, it might increase the, the oh, garbage capacity that we can even handle. Yeah, at least, well, at least the new user. I will definitely have that conversation with them, and they may elect to go to private polar, but as many of them, it might okay. be easier for them. Okay. Definitely, if they have to put something out front or be required to roll them out front, they have to be taken. I don't know if that's really going to happen. So. We did have a comment about the current dumpster locations that uh, a couple of them seem to be blocking existing truck bays. So these two here, we did actually put them in front of the truck bay for a purpose um, so that when they're in the building, they can actually open the bay door and go out and dump and use and access the dumpster that way. Uh, that's why they're placed there. Um, those loading doors will remain, but the dumpsters were gonna go there just so that they could access the dumpsters from inside the building rather than having to go down off the dock and around. So they, they will not be moved? They won't be moved, no. That was, the, that was the intent we had was to leave them there. So that's gonna be a conversation we have with them about the private hall or, um, and versus uh, village pickup. So we'll have that conversation again. Uh, in relation to the, the bay doors as well, but that was the intention was to leave them there, yeah. Inside? No, uh, outside on the dock, outside, outside the below dock. the dock. So oh, when, they, the when they open the dock door, they can walk out, put it in the dumpster and close the dock door again. So that way they can access them right from the building without having to get out. Okay. But the that, all, that, that all may change when we talk With about With the this. employees, did we address that? The number of employees in parking? So the change we made to the employees in the parking was, I know we, the last plan said, based upon the amount of parking we have, they could have up to 72 employees. Uh, on the plans, we revised it to show uh, what they actually have in the existing buildings and what's proposed for the new building. It's in the parking calculations on the plan. Okay. Um, so that by code, we're only required like 14 spaces now. We're still providing 43 but we're showing what number of employees that we anticipate or that are currently there will only require 14, so we went that way instead. So that way we show excess parking. 14 for the entire site? For the entire site, yeah. Seems for the new we're, building? We're, no, 14 space, I believe it was 14 total. No, I should be at 14. Because you have, it says eight. Uh, it's two spaces per three employees is, your, is the code. So uh, the current buildings have, um, Two, two, six, and six in the proposed building will have six. So employees? Employees, yes. Well, but what happens when they move out? Then there's not enough parking for Well, the that's itself. you're required is fourteen, we're providing forty three. Yeah, they're providing Oh you are 43. providing yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Forty two, forty three. Well we're fourteen. I don't know what yeah. the space space you are there, right? I lose count. I have so many parking yeah. spaces. Um, you, you, you have this letter from Mike Antoli on yes. the, also on the 15th. Okay. Correct. Is this what we're basically going with? Yep. Um, ADA parking spaces and things like that. Um, yeah, but our parking spaces, I think we're noted on the pen, but there's no indication where the entrance so, is. Or right. Space. This ADA parking spot has the sidewalk that goes into the corner of the building. Well, um, the uh, proposed entrance will be across from here. We will show a sidewalk and. and Entrance into this building off of that one so that you can see it. Which which one are we talking about? Good for the new building? So the new building, the door is proposed to be right here across from the entrance. Right. So we'll show once we get into the detailed grading and have some architecture done by uh, by Jason Anderson, we'll be able to know exactly where this will be and adjust as is necessary. The existing one comes in this sidewalk into the corner of the building. get into our detailed design, we'll know whether we're under an acre and over an acre, and how obviously if we're over a lot of people So yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what the, the architect yeah. has. Well, so like I said, it, 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 I don't know exactly when that's going to be, as I, I found out at 3 o'clock today that he was oh. authorized, so uh, we'll see when that can be. I don't know if we'll be back in time for December soon, but probably. Yeah, because it would be nice if you're going to put this in the middle of the you know residential area that it looks yep. absolutely good. So we don't get a lot of complaints about that, and plus it just distracts from our, 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 our neighborhood. In order to fit the project in, they're going to be having to take down the, the trees that are already there against the um, railroad track. I don't see how we could have. We'd have to remove the, the, the green that's there already. So 
right now is this is the existing secondary entrance that comes in is right through here. And that's kind of covered with it. Yeah, it's kind of overgrown. So there's a lot of definitely for all the trees in here. No, that's where the existing if there is an existing yeah, that's not that'll used that's not used currently. 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 That's not used there. currently yeah. but that will all be covered over that. This will be the only entrance in now. Where are they? Hopefully there'll be new trees planted somewhere. We'll do a landscape if you find to do to um make it because I'd like to see maybe some possible landscaping along the, the roadway. And Just also whatever landscaping is there now is gonna be gone yeah. to make room for the building. I would like to see an alternate site for the snow. Yes, Maybe a larger area. Well, not on Boyd. Not on Boyd Street, yes. Yeah, somewhere in the back. Um, Uh, city Winery, yeah. it's uh, 204 one dish one it's on Factory Street. Uh, so I've seen they made some changes to, uh, they made some changes. Mm. Also, I guess they didn't submit a full plan either. Uh, there's not a full plan been submitted to Lincoln Hall. They can only go by what was changed, I guess. I'm unaware of any submission that was made. This was done on, they did this on their own, so I can't comment on any of this. Okay, so there's no, there's no one there's here. There's no one here. Sitting here. Oh, I know. Yeah. I figured Todd would be here, but uh, uh, maybe, maybe he's avoiding. So I have, now, last month, um, I had a very pointed discussion with Todd, and I, and I know Ross was here last month, but yes, you did. Um, and I just want to say, you know, your client, and maybe you want to convey this message to him, Jay, because uh, I, I feel, and I don't know if anybody else on this board feels, that they're just thumbing their nose at the village of Montgomery. No sooner did we finish that meeting, that within the last couple of weeks, did anybody look at the site? Did anybody see the, wa the, the rusted water tower and what's on it? Uh -huh. Two huge signs. Black and white block letters, not approved by anybody, saying wine. Not even city wine. I forget the name of wine. Now we just had. I just, had, I, I just said to them last month, if you want signs, you got to come to this board. Because they never put anything up. You got to go to the AHRB because it's historic property. In this particular case, you probably have to go to historic preservation since they're now putting signs on a historic water tower. I think. Uh, the building inspector tell me they intend to also put a sign up on the smokestack where they have the scaffold in there. And mm -hmm. that, now that was not in the original plan. No, 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 no this was in the original no, plan. No. Well, the, the conceptual <laughs> one for the, the, the water tower, there was some signage up there. But you didn't approve it? We didn't approve it, right. And certainly HRB hasn't seen anything that I'm aware of. We did not approve the off site sign. We can't nope. do that anyway. It's still there. And we never approved the fence. It's still there. So they, they submitted plans for a fence, which I, they're not here to talk about it, but it says here like there's a, a fence type A. And I've looked everywhere, I don't see a fence type A, I'm just assuming it's this. Well, again, as we said back in June, when this was first presented to the board, that it was not on your, no fences were on the original site plan, mm -hmm. and they were told that that fence, not only has to be approved by you, but they have to go to the AHRB to, re to review and approve the fencing they want to put up. They never did it. And included the deer fence around the, the vineyard and whatever other fence they're putting up because I, I haven't been up to the site, but I um, it looks like from the landscaping plan that they are 
we're still talking about putting a gate up and other fencing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is showing on the landscaping plan. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yet they want to come here and get a temporary CO. They don't want to pay parking lots. But um, it, 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 all, all these, these are going to delay this, this, this CO. Not necessarily. Not, not, not if the building inspected us, gives them a temporary CO. He still has to comply. Yes, well, he, does, he still has to comply with the village law. Yes, he does. And he's not doing that. And in fact, he's adding to the violations by just sticking signs up wherever he feels like sticking up signs. Now, I, again, I, I saw it. I, I'm like, what is that? Not only was it not approved by anybody, but I, it's not I'm talking about. It's not close yeah. to being historic. It's black and white block letters saying wine on on a rusted. Old water right. tower on a historic property. I, I gotta believe the historic preservation would not like because no. they never saw that part of the I thought it said city winery. It doesn't that says say wine. <laughs> There's wine on all sides. Like it. That's all it is. <laughs> it's I haven't been down there. Uh, I have been down there, so I, I've seen the, the deer fence at the. The deer fence that I understand for the building inspector the day he went up Which there, was not the deer were inside the fence. So were they running in the fence and bouncing off the fence? In any it. event, um, <laughs> I don't know what this board wants to do, but again, Is there Todd's not here. Can't do? Jay's not ready to speak about it because it, I don't there wasn't their submission. I, I so, I have not well, maybe we need to really send really the building inspector, and I know it's his, his decision whether they get a temporary CO or not, but maybe as we well should as let our board issue, know. Issuing violations because he's clearly in violation right. of the village code. So we, maybe we should, uh, I propose to do it. No one no wants to see this. Create a, okay. a letter I, to Bruce and let him know the situation and how since, the planning board feels about this. It has since the June meeting to know what they had to do, go for a variance of the offsite. Sign, go to the AHRB for signs, go to the AHRB for fences, come back to this board with approvals. Right. Now, to clarify, just so you know, the general public does not think we don't like them. We like city winery, we want them to come in. No, but I would say the like city, the concept, the of, concept city winery. of seeing city winery, yes. Um, but right now, they're right, they're not being but what the, the thing city. is that they still have to comply because it's the it's the site that has to comply. So if this site is not complying and we let them slide because we really want them here, then the next applicant mm -hmm. will think they're getting the same thing. That's right. mm -hmm. So you know what? No. They I do not feel they should get their CO. He needs to do what everyone else does. Just <coughs> because Orange County planning, Orange County tourism and Orange County, everything else really wants them here. We all do. Does that mean they could just do whatever they want? And that is where I. Well, I'm asking Mr. Samuelson to please convey that to his client. I mean, but obviously, his client's not here anymore. Yeah, to could you please you. convey that? It's nothing personal. No, I, but if so we let them anything. go because Orange I mean, County wants them here. I hear you loud and clear. Well, we made that point last week. So yes, and I'd like to make it again for the record. I will, I will reiterate it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know without them having represented here whether or not it's worthwhile bringing up one of the comments from our letter, but um, we uh, do have a letter from DEC uh, about their application for permit and how they have to have uh, an opportunity for public comment before yeah. they begin work. Um, so we just ask that they clarify uh, whether or not some of the work has already been completed. Yeah, sure, but you what they did without what is this pertaining to the DEC letter? Was this uh, for the historic part of this, or was this environmental for the Bald Eagle? This one, right? Yeah. 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 Clean Water Act yeah. Water Quality Certification. It's in conjunction with getting the nationwide permit for the uh, Army Corps wetlands crossing to get to the, uh, the, to go re the rear parking lot. That's, oh, the rear. Yeah, no, oh, that's for the crossing. Uh, the, the crossing of the Army Corps wetlands. So when you apply for the Army Corps permit, you have to get a clean water cert, uh, water quality cert from DC, and that's where they're coming. I guess did they get the Army Corps permit? No, this is part of the. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, I just, I just want to make sure I wasn't don't lose my mind. Yeah. They're only doing this to themselves. They're prolonging their opening. It, it's not us. Um, well, I think not if they get a temporary CO. Well, well, I think that's what we need to just convey to Bruce. I mean, that's, yes. it's, 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 it's still ultimately up to him. We can't tell him what to do, but we can at least let us let him know that there are viol mm -hmm. You can let them know that there are obvious violations on the property, right? And that, and that <laughs> we should hold them accountable for that. Yes, I please. We should do that. And Somebody want to so craft that letter? <laughs> I'm being looked at. I will, be, I, I will craft I'm a gentle yes, letter. Yes. <laughs> a nice one, though. Very nice. Well, yes, go to my I'll building inspector. Okay. okay. I'll be nice to him. Yes, thank you. Well, and, <laughs> and, and, job, and, so. and, the, and the trustees, too. Yes. I mean, be part of it because they're, they're the ones who officially gave the go ahead and value the most. Everybody at BCC. Yeah, it's a BDD. It's pretty much out of our hands anyway. All right, so we can't really discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, 99 Clinton Street, which is 202-2-13. Jay is prepared to talk about that one. <laughs> uh, what do we want to talk about first? We made a few revisions. Uh, yeah. um, Brian's brought architecture. I know that was a big discussion last right. month. He's got little ones to give you. To give oh, I like little right now mm -hmm. um, and it, it kind of has then the top part kind of has a, a kind of a barn look to it mm -hmm. so right I mean right next to it there's I mean you know, there'll be a space it, but there's a brick building um, it does the architectural does, design doesn't match with the rest of the village of Montgomery so it just seems a little yeah. the, well, the yeah. windows are not historic I mean I know on my house I had to have historic windows why do you say the windows aren't historic they don't, I don't know. They're, they're going to want to have a full pane want. window, not what? a, like a, a, full, a full pane window. window. A full full window. window. Full, Instead of having four individuals. Well, that's not true. I mean, I, I've sold windows for 30 years, and, and uh, this is the look I want, and I 
six foot one party uh, pipe pattern is a story. Oh, no, that's not the, the problem. Part. We're talking about the bottom. Oh, down here? Yes. I, the I think it's, it's the same thing here. I mean, it, I think it would, I think it would look too busy with the, uh, um, all those paints. And you're the first person that has told me that they don't have paint over there. I've been showing this, pic, I've been showing this, uh, this plan around for a year now. Well, like it's I said, beautiful. The, the, the building is fine. Mm -hmm. I sat on the historic board for here in the village for, mm -hmm. I don't know, 10 years. Um, Bob Wiggins would fall off his chair if he saw it because it absolutely does not fit the character of the village of Montgomery. Um, mm -hmm. So it you know, doesn't. When, you're about, when you're talking about board and bat siding, that, that is, that's historic. I'm not saying it's not historic, but it doesn't blend with the character of the village. What I'm saying. Well, you're saying there's no other. I will tell you. I will, I will tell you this. I've been in the village of Montgomery for a long time. Right, not the, the village of Montgomery is such a mixed bag. I mean, there's really only one historic building you have on on uh, on Clinton Street, and that's the brick building that didn't burn down. Everything else is uh, pretty much uh, raised after that old vinyl siding. Yes, but we well, are trying to comply. Change that. Well, even premises. the building, the pharmacy has a has a blends more with. The well, the pharmacy has uh, the pharmacy has uh, Anderson windows, and the pharmacy has uh, cloud and china. But they yes, there there's yes, <coughs> and that's and true. And they have and they have a roof that looks just like that. It's yeah. true, but it doesn't have the siding is not the batten board like that going vertical. Um, it's horizontal. It's not three different types, mm -hmm. um, and the windows are multi-pane windows. So it does blend more with the character of the village. Mm -hmm. Are we here to talk about the uh, um, the architect of the building? We're here to talk about sort of what the site plan. We're talking site plan, but you brought well, the architect. You brought it up, you, so you I just brought it up. You wanted to see. You wanted to see the architect. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you the architect. I know, and I'm making a comment. <laughs> but you know, you will be going to the historical review board. I will so not be. No, she won't you be. Won't. No. It's not, it's not in the historic district. It's, it's not, not in the historic district. district. It's not adjacent. District. No, it's the district. It's oh, not in the district. district. Oh, okay. If, there's something that, if there's something that you tell me that I agree with you on, then I don't think about changing that. Um, but I've had so many people look at this. I had this all collaborative side. Do they before. live in the village? And people said to me, no, 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 you have to... You have to change up the siding. Board and batten would look nice. I've talked to people. Up, I've uh, talked to uh, builders up in Ulster County about this. That's fine. I said I would like to make a comment. Right. I have the right to an opinion, Absolutely. and I'm making that opinion. Okay. If you want to show it to us, we showed it, and I right. made a comment about it. Okay. It's just so. that you know, for the village, that's what we were saying. Right. It was Our my. Village. It's my. But comment. you know what? One of the things I do. Uh, every, everything that we build is nice. I don't build crap. And, no, no, we and, agree. And sometimes what you think is best for the village and what I think is best for the village, um, my opinion I, may be better. Okay, well. You follow me? No, I'm serious. Okay. When it comes to architecture. So yeah. how many buildings? Um, well, I think our um, master plan, we talked about having architectural review in the master plan. Maybe yeah. to add that to our code. Right. So we have building. more... We don't have it in There's nothing there. on this building that has vinyl siding on it. These aren't vinyl windows. Um, it's, I, I understand what you're saying. You don't like the way it's put together. And uh, I said it had more of a Shaker Mission look to it mm -hmm. as opposed to um, some of the other historic I, I buildings like in your, character. Of I would just like to know what you're comparing it to that the town because you're the town is the village of Montgomery. Is I understand mix, it, it is a mix. It's, I, it's I get such that. a mixed bag, and it's it, actually I think it's uh, you know I, I really don't think the village has much historical value downtown. I mean, well, I no, think some I of the buildings. It'll burn down. I think some of the buildings uh, on the left side of Clinton Street. Mm -hmm. have the big windows with multi-pane windows in it right. um, and they don't have multi-level uh, or different vertical and horizontal siding it's okay. horizontal siding um, you want to see how here's the, here's the back of the building here you want to see you, you, your eyes would go cross-eyed if you looked at all horizontal siding on the back of that building it had to be broken up just too large a space well I, I, can, I can get that, but people are driving down the main street of Montgomery and walking down the street of Main Street of Montgomery. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're looking at. 
Hi. This is going to be a beautiful building. So part of the uh, peer review uh, was, um, it says the project is located in the Bridge Street Historic District. The applicant has submitted these materials to, to ship out, and a letter of no impact has been received from the office. Did you send the architectural view to ship out? No. no. You just sent the site plan. So we really, we really can't comment on the design of the building. We can only ask you to make it look that it would fit into the village. I, I think what Aaron's saying, based on her experience, being on the HRP for that long and having a, you know a lot of knowledge about the different historic buildings in the village, I think she you know had a valid comment. Oh, I, th I think you have valid comments too. And um, so if we can if we can just go back to our site plan review, mm -hmm. I think that would be perfect. Well, yeah, so we really we don't need to officially start a secret process. Right. Is that a letter from the previous time it was, it was submitted? Was that submitted last time? You submitted plans to the uh, ship out? Letter? No. Yeah, we're going to start a secret process yet, so. We, once we start the AF and the ship out hit comes up, we automatically submit them. It's all submitted online nowadays. So that's where, that's where the, uh, you know, impact came from. from that. Because like I said, I, I, I'd like to confirm that we're not in the Bridge Street Historic District. I don't believe we are. But, but yeah, the, 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 um, it's the letter from Shippo says, substantially contiguous to, they're not, they're not in it. Correct. In both the districts. Right. right, within eyesight. Right. Substantially mm -hmm. contiguous, but that's not what our OSS AHRB review. But I, I, I think it still has to go that the architecture should still go to ship out because that's part of our secret process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll need those. We've got them. We've been provided with them. All right. Um, there's quite a few things on here. Yeah, there's well. only a few that I would like to go through. I have questions on most of them I have no issue with. Uh, addressing a few of the minor issues that she has listed here. Um, let's start with number six which talks about um, the ADA parking. These are all existing parking spots al uh, alongside the old um, Walton Savings Bank, which is now Rowley's office in the Keller Williams building. These are all existing. We're not proposing any change to these. Um, so our only change starts from here over. So without losing the space for parking, to get an eight-foot aisle is, uh, is, is um, impossible. So, so I don't know. So that comment was um, based on ADA regulations that say if you're modifying um, a parking area, which I would consider that modification of a parking area, then the ADA spaces have to be brought up to the regulations of having um, an accessible aisle. So. so what number are we talking about? Is it spot number 10? We're talking about Six. spot number 10, yes. Okay. And you're, that would be at the ground level. Those are all existing. Yes. Yeah, the parking yeah. Is that handicapped for the, for the, for the rental building? Yeah. Yes. So the new building, <coughs> the new commercial building, where's, where's the handicapped parking? They would either use this one or they have the park on the street. Or, uh, just is this two lots? So they're going to so use that just, one for two buildings. Two lots, right? Correct. So you have one handicapped on this lot, but you don't have one on the second lot. Correct. How many handicapped all are required for? Well, how, how many of the spots on are all for residential? Right. Yes, yeah, so all those spots are actual garage spots. These spots that you see on this plan are all existing. These are all the existing parking that will go away as you see. Same with these. So the eight spots on the lot two are all the garage spots on the eight. Okay. So are they required to have an ADA spot on lot number two? Two. Or something dedicated to the 
retail use on lot number two? I mean, I know they're they're saying that they are 500 feet within the municipal parking lot. But not for a handicapped. Yeah. We're not. A handicapped, a handicapped individual can't park in the parking lot, and then you can't fit in the parking lot, the parking lot and then somehow get into the commercial ADA. building. Then it's not ADA. It's not for ADA compliance. No. Does that make sense? We have never done that. We will. One of these well, like I said, those are all gone. Those are not going to be there. That's going to be the access aisle. The only thing that's going to be there is the limited. Yes. Yeah. There's kind of a... Yeah, we can definitely clarify that plan. But yeah, those are the older spots that exist now that you'll need to, to get in access. That'll all just be a drive access, driveway access to the garage spots. Uh, we'll review the ADA code and, and uh, we'll go through it and see what we can accomplish. Again, I guess we'll do the same with comment number seven. Um, but we're going back to six again. So six on lot one now. You're not going to be able to provide that access. You talked about the access. Well, um, the only way, with the amount of space that's actually there for the existing pavement area that's there, the only way we could do it is to lose the space. Right. So, but the the ADA space isn't within specs, right? I mean, you got to have that. That was my understanding so, of the so ADA code. When you that? review the ADA yeah. for this we'll part here we're... on lot two, let's look at lot one as yeah. well. So with regards to comment number seven on lot one, report with spots one and six backing out. Um, there again, these are all those are existing spaces against the building that they back out now. In turn, I understand there's no spaces behind them at this point in time. But again, we there is no additional uh, room for additional pavement back there because that's the fence and, and then a walkway to the adjacent uh, building. Um, Again, we can provide something, but we're trying to provide as much parking as we can for these uses and to uh, <coughs> a couple of these things, we're gonna start eating up parking spaces. So, and this lot one, or lot one parking for lot one, this would be, at what grade is this gonna be at? That's all the upper elevation. That's all the same elevation as okay. now. All right, so there's, we have walls back in here? Nope, that's all existing. Nope, that's all existing curve that's back there. The only grade change that's gonna start is gonna We'll start to fill in this section here because here's the, the where it comes down and then the wall starts right here. So the we'll wow. we'll start filling in this section just to kind of level this out so right. this is still level, and then it'll be a great change from here to here. Okay. Through this section here. Yeah, you got what do you have? Like three. There's an error in the contour yeah. numbers. Don't do okay. that. <laughs> I saw that too, and I looked at the plan for that. Uh, but regarding spot number six currently. There are no spots on the opposite side. There's no, there's like no I said, there, there's no spots opposite this now, so there is additional. So they can back, back out, out and leave out the other exit. So whereas... again, we can we can provide room here, but this would take away two spots here as well. So they'd be down to, and with the ADA frames, they'd be down to uh, seven spots instead of ten. And again, we were just trying to provide additional parking. That's. I get it. I guess so. Uh, it's I, kind of a. It's a. I don't know how you somewhere in the middle, I guess. Right. The answer. Yeah. Because it's, it's you know, you're in a situation where you could have an ADA spot that's not legal. So what would why would we do that? Mm -hmm. If you go over, if you were to look at the ADA spot right now, you, you may say it's not legal to you because you look at it, it's very adequate and very room. So my question well, I'm not, is I'm not debating that. whether it's adequate and roomy at all and what the existing right. position is. It's like moving forward and what yeah. what um, our engineer just is that access aisle, are we allowed to use part of the sidewalk as part of that access aisle? I don't see anything. No, I don't think mm -hmm. so. Because if cause that butts right up right. to it, it's all level, it's all the same elevation here. No, because you, yeah. you have to have the, um, the markings on it. I mean, I have to be able to mark the sidewalk. Right? No. Um, That's where it's, yeah. No, the, where it's marked is actually in the right way as well. But, so that's been there. I was there when we moved in that building. On the sidewalk? 15 years. That's not on the sidewalk, oh. right up to the edge of the sidewalk. Oh. Right up to the edge, just yeah. right at that, at that ground yeah. level. Mm -hmm. So that's been marked like that for a long time. But... All right, we will review that. Um... What's number eight? Like the plans need to include information and materials to be proposed between the mixed use building and the existing pavers along 211. So I think they're asking what is the, the final ground condition in this area, mm -hmm. and this will continue to be grass in this area, in oh. between the building and the, and the existing tower. 
the yeah. building and existing sidewalk. Okay. So between the curb. So the, there's the curb, the curb there's the grass, 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 the sidewalk. There'll be additional grass and then the building. Okay. Other yeah, than other than where the the stairs and, and the ramp are to get into the building. And there's benches there too. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. So those benches, if they're if they're entering this way, we we'll, can move them into the open area so that they they remain. Um, we do know that there's some changes that have to be made to the sidewalk to comply with the ADA. The, uh, the, the landing here has to be five by five, um, so we'll make that change. Um, the other big uh, one I wanted to talk about was number 12 for the stormwater. Um, we're definitely under an acre of disturbance here. Um, we're not changing any of the grade along the back of this parking lot, all this concrete curb that's here is the main. <coughs> Currently, this entire parking lot comes this way, drains along this curve, and flows down Charles Street. Um, our net impervious is actually less than what's there today, um, but generally, we're looking at keeping the drainage patterns where they flow today. Um, but we we are reducing the amount of impervious. We're taking out part of the uh, the access here to the parking lot, which is now probably close to 40, 45 feet wide. We're reducing that down to just over 20, just for the driveway into the back. Uh, there's some additions here in the front, and then there's some spots here on the sides uh, that was parking that will be making grass. So the overall is a net reduction. So the water will drain out towards Charles Street. The water will come out and drain towards Charles Street, go down along in front of um, 88 Charles Street, and then uh, down in front of our building where the, the catch basin is now further. So I think without uh, a final Grading plan, it wasn't clear okay. how we'll, we'll the site was going to drain. Okay. So once we have a grading plan. Yeah, there's plan. a few connection concourse that are missing in there that we'll clean. <coughs> so number nine, I know you skipped the 12, but not yeah. uh, 12, 9, 10, and 11 are all due to the ADA. Yep. And accessibility. I yeah. agree with all those. We can make all those changes. That's not a problem. And number nine was pointing out that the ramp and the stairs are within the view. You have to be well aware of that. Yeah. Okay. The lighting, let's talk about the lighting. Um, there is a big spotlight on the side of this building that lights up this parking lot. Right. Um, if you want, we can. I can try to determine what that light is and create a lighting plan from it. But we know that that currently lights up this whole area as we speak. Um, Brian, are you gonna have lights on the garage side of the building for their entrance? You can have wall-mounted sconces or something? Probably. Wow. By the garages, hope so. we can we can find out what those well, are and show some sort of. What about the front of the building as well? The front of the door. Oh, probably. Well, you would have to, I would assume. The yeah. lighting. Yeah. That's probably running into the building. It's not probably. Well, I don't have it on yet. No, you don't have it on yet, but we would like it. Yes. So I, we, those we can add to the building yes, and please. show where they are and what they'll be and what their mounting heights will be. Those we can definitely add. Thank you. What do you want to do about the existing building? Do you want me to try to figure out what that does? or we, we Yes, know that that I, I would, maybe they can move it. Maybe it'll a different light. Oh, I God. think it's good. Yeah, I mean, on this building, it sits up. It sits up rather large on the side of this building. Yeah, it shines brown. So it's part of that building. Yes, yeah. it's part of the, the old 99, yeah. the old bank building. It's up on this. So building. nobody, you don't, somebody else owns that. So yeah, you me. have to get yes. it. Oh, you own it. <laughs> oh, so yeah, yes, I would it like to have the it. entire. It's almost yeah, like the whole entire parking, parking, parking yeah. lot. Yeah, parking lot. Have you ever been? For all the village okay. residents that park there. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I see it from my house. Um, it's fine, but if you want to update it, if there's new lighting or... Well, what do we need know. to include in the lighting plan for this? Because of the way it's designed, the way it's laid out. We have an existing building with an existing light on it. Well, it's going to be a separate lot now, right? Right. <laughs> that building, you need a, a, an existing... You need yeah, a lighting plan for the existing building? Well, you're yeah. splitting it into a building. No, it's a new building. The new, new building. building. Yeah. Well, the new building, so and now you already, Kevin has has a, a, you already have a light on. The, the, actually, Kevin has a point. Um, does it have lot one have to have its own lighting? Because there's three separate lots now. Two. There's two. Well, no. 
This is part of it. That's all part of it. The building is part of it. And that was already lit. Okay. All right. I thought they were all three separate. Okay. Yes. But that too has to have a lighting plan. Correct. This upper parking lot will be part of the building. We'll all be part of the building. That's fine. You can leave it. It doesn't matter. So just the underneath are the are the the garage is separate for each apartment, or are they it's left open? It, it's going to be uh, yeah. two, two spaces that are designated for each apartment. So it'll be kind of all open underneath there? No, yeah, it's like this. Thing. It's like this where they haven't depicted it. No, up. I know, but they're bays. You have going in, but it's not. Once gonna, you get inside, once you get inside it's going to be one right? big open space. Even though there's spoilers. Once you get inside, if you look at the base, the basement plan there. Yeah. And you, once you get inside, there's uh uh, yeah, there's common, there's common access to the stairs. The foundation plan you're talking? And yeah, you got the basement plan, the basement plan? Yeah. And the <coughs> optional wall has, that would delineate between each one of these bays, get two optional walls in there. Right. Which you're probably, which you're going to put up. So the staircase is in the center. I was just trying to understand. So like the, there's the staircase to go upstairs. So be it in, is in the center of that yes. underneath there, and then it will. That's right. Okay. All right. Each, each unit gets a uh, storage space in the basement. Yeah. Okay. Thirteen. Uh, Fourteen is about the water line. Water line. That's fine. Oh uh, well, so that's the existing. This was done. This was shown on the markout. Um, there hasn't been a building there in my lifetime, um, so I don't know when that was abandoned. I would really not like to have to dig up 211 to abandon that at the main. But that that, month, that, main, that line has been abandoned for you know, 45 plus years or more. Oh, you have the camera. There's plenty of underneath. Yeah, yeah there's. <laughs> I took it actually half of that reason. But for another, another reason. So I think uh, our comment about the water line and abandoning it, it's just unclear right. what that line yeah, is. Yeah, that was what showed up at, as part of the, the, uh, the mark out that was done. So I believe that's just an abandoned service for a building that was here. Many years ago, so. I think if it runs onto the Yeah, obviously, if, if it runs in here, it doesn't run past the wall, which is right here. And the building will be almost right up to the, to the street line. I mean, if we encounter it when we're working in here behind the sidewalk, we can definitely cut and cap it a little further back, but without knowing exactly where it goes. Cut and cap what? The existing water service, if it's behind the sidewalk, we don't, not into the street. We just cut and cap. We just paid uh, twenty seven hundred dollars for behind the wall. Uh, this this line right here. We did it on the street. Yeah, we did it on the street there. Uh, buddy said it was leaking, and uh, <coughs> we paid to have it cut and cap. Right here. Raise it right there at the curb. Right? Yeah. So it's been cut and capped there at the curb. So where's your new water line going? We're gonna come in off of Charles Street with the oh, water line. Okay. That's what this one is. Yep. Because mm -hmm. the, the sewer and the water, water will both okay. come in off of Charles Street. I believe pretty much everything is on this plan. Um, if there's something that we're missing, if we go through the rest of the comments and we need to create additional plan, we will, but I think the majority of the things are on that plan. And then you have the Orange County Planning Department. Yeah, so now let's talk about Seeker. As Kevin said, Seeker hasn't been done, so obviously I think we're at the stage where we can definitely start that at this point. Then. Well, I, I would make a motion that we are tentatively the agency of Seeker. Yeah. Tentatively the agency yeah. under what I'm listed action. And you'll have to uh, send to Nice Dot, Village DPW, 
I would send the architectural to historic preservation. I need a motion to get a second on that. I'll second. All in favor of that? Regarding the EAF um, and the, the village DPW and the DOT, I can revise that and get that to you, Tina, tomorrow morning. We can have that right on the right when we set up. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um, regarding the Indiana bat and the bald eagle, obviously, you know, I'm in trees for the bat. Right. Uh, with this board, we all know where the bald eagle is. We know it's not here. So <laughs> if, um, we know where it is, so we'll get that. Yes, we do. The light, will, uh, the light, the light will shining the opposite, <laughs> shining the opposite direction. <laughs> Although it does come into the village, I've seen it on my. Well, well it doesn't shine in there. The historic district we've gone through. We're going to include Chippewa on the new agency. Okay. Um, the last one. What we just talked about. So I'll get the, the original plans to uh, Tina. Additional sets of the architectures, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get it out. All right, we'll just do it for you. Start the process. Okay, sounds good. And then corrections after that. For this. Um, for speaker, we might, uh, for the distribution, maybe just clean this up a little bit for DOT, but other than that, I think for speaker, we'll be fine. And we can make the rest of the revision as we go. I just have a quick question. I don't want to throw it in the floor. Um, but with your decision to go to a single entrance, um, and I completely understand that decision, why that decision was made, um, I look inside here, it, it, I guess the plan is called for two, two tenants, two commercial tenants. So the decision to go to the single entrance, does that perhaps affect? the ability to create more spots in a future date? Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. 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 And it, is there, would there be any way to rectify that somewhere down the line in the future? Uh, we don't tend to, we don't tend to make the spots smaller. We don't take one of them ourselves. Okay. And there's only going to be one available. And okay. each spot is only going to have one set of utilities. So you can't just put a wall down yeah. the center. Yeah. Yeah. It's understandable. Yeah. No, just one of the concerns was to make sure that those spots. Well, I wanted two entrances. Yeah. I can't do it. No, I understand. Yeah. yeah. And then, so the initial was the initial idea to have more than two commercial spots. No. No. Always two commercial yeah, spots anyway. Yeah. Okay. The reason why was if you have if you have four spots, you need four furnaces, four HVAC units, four sinks, four toilets, four everything. It was it was just yeah. compounded. Yeah. I'm just trying to envision the size of the spots. Yeah. You know, um, because uh, you know I see. The size of that commercial space where the pharmacy used to be. Yeah. It seems like a big spot. You know, yeah. I don't know if that's affecting the ability to fill it or not, you know, but, you know, the concern should be always to fill the spots, you know, however yeah. large the spot way I, they I, are. I understand yeah, the pharmacy. Sense. I understand you, they still been, you're still getting paid on the lease, right? Uh, I don't know yeah. the specifics of it, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had a single entrance, too. I don't think, I don't think the single entrance is They're still getting paid on the lease. I don't, I don't have any idea. And, uh, yeah. I don't <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but, you know, look. It'll get filled. It'll get filled. We're good to go? Yep. All right. Good to go. We're good, guys? Nobody has questions? Fine. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Hold on. Um, the extra order of business really was a minutes for the meeting from last month. So, can I get a motion to approve those as they're written? I'll make a motion. Okay. Second that? Second. Motion to you guys second. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second it. All in favor of the adjourning? Aye. 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 Thank you.